We were all waiting with bated breath, but now it's time for celebration as we learned that both proposals at Tesla's shareholder meeting have won by a wide margin. What does this mean for the company? What does this mean for Elon Musk? Today, we'll review all the changes we expect to happen and everything that's now even more likely to happen. Today, I've got Larry Goldberg joining us. He's a multi-entrepreneur and been wanting to hear your thoughts, Larry. What do you think? Hap- um, how do you feel about this vote and w- what's going to happen next? Well, I think it is time for celebration. Uh, we'll hear tomorrow definitively. And so everything we say today is based upon the Yahoo poll, which I think is fairly accurate. Look, I was expecting a victory. <clears throat> I said I thought it would be, I was very confident it would be a victory, but I thought with a significantly reduced margin over four years ago, I think it. It's looking like it's not only going to be a very similar margin, but maybe even an increased margin. And so this is a huge moment. I I will also say that I'm not sure that the uh, move to Texas is a clear enough vote. I think it has to be 70% of all shares, which is about 2.2 million, uh, 2.2 billion shares. I see on the on the on the uh, Yahoo poll they've got about two billion shares, so it's that looks a little tight to me. But can the court stop this? I mean, the court can do anything at once, really, and has done whatever it wanted apparently. But I think this time, this time, the court has been gazumped. I think that this will go through. I think without any doubt. I think the court was going to have to stand down. I think the question of what it pays the lawyers are going to be an open question, but it's going to have to stand down. That's my view. No, agreed. Yeah. So we'll we'll talk more about that, but let's talk first about the retail community that Tesla has. This this incredible army, Tesla Boomer Mama, Alexandra Mertz. She led us. She got out the vote. What does this mean for the future? Right. This community that stood up, protecting Tesla. Um, I think the only other company that might be even, you know, similar to this is GameStop, where they were able to mobilize 50 million retailers to do something to help the company. Um, But here we've got 10 million Tesla shareholders. What's your thoughts about that? I think the other company you should also give credence to is Robinhood. I think they have a very large number of retail shareholders, but there's no doubt that Alexandra, Tesla Boomer Mama, Alexandra Mertz, was the, was the magic bullet in this vote. She got the retail vote to turn out. And I think this is a, this is a wake-up moment for institutions and for directors and for boards of directors of companies. The retail shareholders have flexed their muscles. I, I think that it's going to be a major change in, in, in governance. I think this whole idea of institutional governance, doing all these, you know, non-focused business stuff, whether it's DEI or, or any of the other uh, issues, I think they're going to have to look over their shoulders and make sure that the retail shareholders, their retail shareholders, go along with them. I don't think that it's because other companies don't have any retail shareholders. They all do. Many of the retail shares are held through institutions, and so the institutions vote whatever their their board thinks about. So we have this really, you know, this frozen uh, governance situation. And I think retail shareholders are going to flex their muscles. And I think Alexandra really has opened a door that cannot be closed. Right. So, I mean, this is pretty big, right? Because it went our way this time. But this is, won't be the only time. There's going to be other scenarios in the future. Uh, it was unbelievable how many brokers, brokerages, were making it very difficult for shareholders to vote. Yeah. We've identified who those are. And some of them, you know, actually turned around and helped this happen. Again, Alexandra was the one keeping the list. But she also said she's keeping a list of all the brokerage firms who did not do this and who voted no. So she's going to go after them. We are going to support her. We're going to go after these guys to really 
you know, market and let everybody know that you should move your money out of these brokerages firms because in the future there will be additional voting and they make it difficult. What about the ones who said no? Do you think that um, the Tesla retail shareholders should do something about that or just that's fine or what's your thinking about that? Every retail shareholder should ensure that the institution in which, which their shares are held reflect their um, uh, views. I, I was the other day with um, uh, a fairly significant retail shareholder in in um, Oslo, and you know he expressed a huge amount of frustration because one of his uh, banks, you know, voted according to his wishes voluntarily because he was a good client. Another one of the banks that held his shares. They don't want to know his trouble. So, it, you know, he's obviously going to be acting accordingly. So I think that this is the beginning. I don't think it's the end, but I think it's the beginning of a move to um, of, of shareholder democracy. And it's very important. Uh, and it's going to, be, going to become far more important in the forthcoming couple of years during this revolution, this AI revolution, this uh, revolution of innovation as Ark talks about, because so many institutions don't understand the power of innovation. Larry, what do you think about the Tesla shareholders who stood up, you know, who lived, who just went through this incredible roller coaster? We've been going through tremendous roller coasters every year, uh, but this is was the big one. And you, it kind of weeded out those people who just said, hey, I'm a momentum investor, I'm out, or they talked a big game, and then they actually said and marketed that they're going to vote no. <laughs> What's your thinking about you know, both sides of it? The ones who are bulls, who stayed strong, and then the ones who just flipped and went crazy. <laughs> you know, I, I, I have to say that um, the biggest the there are two really very divisive issues on the table. The one is Elon's politics, his personality, and his drive to free speech. Free speech is very threatening to some people these days. It's threatening to a particular, you know, group of people who believe that, you know, everybody should believe one thing or one way, and if they don't, they're not good people. And their and their voices shouldn't be heard. That's a you know. That's a political view, and they are very opposed to Elon's view, you know, and trying to protect free speech. And they see his acquisition of Twitter as a negative for Tesla. And it may be in the short term, for all I know. Um, you know, people are saying, "Oh, we're not going to buy Tesla because you know we don't uh, we don't accord with." with Elon's political views, even though his political views are quite centrist and people don't understand his views very well. So that's one aspect. And, and the other aspect is the issue of the drive, his drive to, um, you know, make Tesla an AI company, his drive to build robots. I mean, I had occasion where, you know, we had uh, Ross Gerber criticize and and talk about why people should vote. No, this is after, the, I mean, his broadcast came after we learned that the, 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 the retail voters or the vote had, had overwhelmingly won. But one of the things he said, uh, and this is, this is really the point I'm trying to get at, is one of the things he says is that, uh, you know, we must stop this fantasy about robotics. Well, the fantasy about robotics is what is drive what te, what Elon is driving Tesla towards, and if you don't understand that, you shouldn't be in Tesla. You know, it, it, it's crazy to invest in Tesla as an auto company, because as an auto company, it's going to be very hard pressed to grow into the kinds of valuations we're going to need to see. To continue this, uh, you know, the share price uh, direction, and to achieve the kinds of valuations 
that some people like Ark and like uh, JP uh, Morgan Stanley and and others have projected for the company. So I'm not critical of the people who don't like Elon. I'm not critical of the people who vote against e or, or, or who, who who don't want to buy Tesla shares. I'm very critical of people who don't understand, who invest in Tesla but don't understand the basis of Tesla and what it's trying to achieve. I'm critical of them and I'm also critical of people who have this kind of negative attitude towards Tesla, uh, Elon. That kind of hatred has no place in investment or investment uh, philosophy. Thank you, Larry. Have you seen this? This is uh, Omar sent this tweet out post on X. He said, okay, Elon, we got you the options. Now you have to make Tesla the most valuable company on earth. Deal? And right away, Elon said yes. <laughs> so shake hands. So Elon is going to make Tesla the most valuable company on earth. He has mentioned this several times. Is this just him, you know, saying things again? Or do you think that now that this is out of the way, this vote, and they're going to give him fine it's a lot easier we, again like you said we don't know yet we're not saying that it's a done deal or anything like that but it's a lot easier now to retro rectify the recession of the uh, 2018 package but now we can start talking about the future what, what do you think uh, is going to happen uh, for elon and then what's going to happen to the company you can answer which of those questions first Elon. yeah firstly um i will say that um i understand that once a, a vote is taken um, and and the company has passed the vote and the, the, the shareholder meeting happens tomorrow, the vote actually occurs according to the Twitter poll, and the, the Yahoo poll, and, and we pass the resolution. The company can issue that stock. They would have to, the, the opposition, the, 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 the guy with his nine shares would have to bring a motion to the Delaware court stopping a Tesla from issuing that stock. That stock is the subject of a new resolution, it has nothing to do with the old resolution. It's passed according to the shareholders, uh, according to the uh, 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 the uh, uh, articles of association of the company, and it can be registered and, and issued. The options can be registered and issued. There would have to be a new court action to stop that. And I've no doubt that those lawyers will try and bring such a new court action, and that may actually result in the case dragging on an extra year or two, and the, the company may not be able to issue the shares during that period. Then there's the issue of the move of the company to Texas. And, you know, whether that passes the 70% of all share, shareholders, uh, all all shares in issue, I don't know. But if it does, there would have to be some new action to stop the company from moving to Delaware, uh, to, to, to Texas. So we're in a never, never land of, of, of illegal mess and, and it'll take time to sort out. So that's part answer to your question. I've forgotten the rest of the question. Yeah, so let's talk about what does this mean for Elon? So let's let's put aside the, the the comp packages and all that. But this gives him right the uh, understanding that the retail shareholders back him and they support him. Yeah. So that's the key thing. That was the one thing that everybody said that oh my gosh, if the vote went negative, he will leave Tesla. He saying oh, I had this no to, doubt. I, would, to I had no doubt he would right. leave. You didn't, but definitely a lot of people did. But that's why I posted that, you know, his response. Are you going to make Tesla the largest company in the world? He said, yes. So you got him. He's got committed now. What's it mean for him? What's he going to do now? Like, so you saw him, wartime CEO, make major changes to the company. And just yesterday, I posted, uh, I saw, you know, did a show where he's actually increasing the hiring across the board now. Every single department is being, you know, the job posting is coming back up. He's made major changes to the company, switching it to a robotics company, uh, and robotics AI and RoboTaxi. What do you think? It, what 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 do you expect from him in the next few 
uh, months. And then later we'll talk about what we expect for the company. Elon Musk is a wartime CEO who functions best in wartime. And in order to function best, he makes every time a wartime. Mm -hmm. And so this change of staff, this change of management, this change of the guard is part of the wartime. But the wartime is very clear. He has to refocus Tesla. He has to refocus Tesla as an AI company. He has to refocus Tesla as a robotics company. He has to refocus Tesla. He has to really drive home FSD. It's not going to be easy. I mean, FSD has got a ways to go. And, you know, we may not see it. We, know, we, we may not see it in full fruition until the end of next year. So it's got a ways to go. The robot has got Optimus has a way to go. And, you know, next gen vehicles have got a way to go. So we've still got a significant fight in, you know, ahead of us. Cybertruck is done. Now, I don't know what the costs are on Cybertruck, and I don't know what the profits are on Cybertruck. All something will be revealed, not all, but something will be revealed at the end of this quarter. So we've got a lot of stuff going on, and it's wartime. And, you know, Elon's made it very clear. Now, there are other aspects as well. We've got to get the semi out, the semi factory done and out. We've got to get the Shanghai mega pack factory up and running. We've got a lot of stuff going on. So Elon's in wartime. This is his heaven, and he's going to do extremely well at it. Um, time will tell. Time will tell, but I think these are, you know, we feel like 2018 and what it is. This is great. This is what we expect of, of Tesla. And I think this bodes well for Tesla's stock because everybody's interested in what the stock price is going to be over the next two to three years. Okay, good. And then what about the company? So, uh, you know, he did come out and say that he wants to have 25% voting control voting control not shares not uh, money he wants voting control because he's concerned about developing robotics ai because it could be a very very negative future with this oh, uh, event happening it just gives you know again higher chances now higher probability that he will find a way that the company will find there's multiple paths for them to get there but with this outcome of the vote very likely to get there now so now that's kind of feeling better in his mind a lot of people said, oh, he has slowed down his effort on bots, and yet they just announced, or they had a little note there saying that there's now two Optimus bots working in the factory already now. Do you think that uh, he was slowing it down? And then what does this mean now that he's got this under the belt here? Is he going to now accelerate the efforts on the bots and AI? I don't think he was slowing down. I think he foretold that this is going to be a tough year and we're going through a tough year. I think he made a huge change um, of people. And part of the reason for the change of people is to reduce the company's fixed costs. Part of the change of people was, you know, to revive the, the energy and focus of the company. Although, some of the people who live in amazing energy and amazing focus. They're some of the greatest people I know. And, you know, they retain pretty positive view of, of, of Tesla. So I think that it really is, you know, an issue of, of, of focus and of, of some sort of, you know, re, some sort of means of waking waking the organization up. He does this very frequently, actually. Um, if you read uh, Walter Isaacson's book, he does this in the small, you know, one person at a time, one um, business unit at a time, or one group of people at a time, or he does it in the large, you know, across the board, 10% cut, you're all gone, done. Um, so I, this is his style. This is his way. And if you don't like it, you really need to not invest in Tesla. This is the how it's going to be. 
the fact that he hasn't slowed down at you know 50 is a very important indicator for us it means that he's he's focused now i don't think he ever lost focus on tesla because of the, the case and so on and so forth and as far as the 75 percent goes this is why it's so important to move to, to texas because once he's in texas there's a lot more flexibility in how the um how the stock is set up in terms of voting and non-voting shares and and how he could structure a, a 25% ownership, which is very important. But there's a lot of negative uh, press on the fact that he sold stock to buy Twitter and that actually cost him the 25% position. Uh, but But... You know, his purchase of Twitter turns out to be very good for Tesla. It turns out to be very good for Tesla because it's a natural adjunct to, uh, to you know, uh, AI and, and provides, you know, the, the data that um, is going to be so valuable for uh, Tesla and for the Tesla cars and for the road. So I think, I think it was a good deal. Tesla. Yeah, I actually agree with you. I don't think that he slowed down at all. In fact, if you look at his actions, he has been on fire the last month, two months, three months, everything. He's just been amazing. He's focused so much on Tesla. He's been talking about Tesla, he's making moves everywhere for RoboTaxi and for the bot. Now that uh, this is done, we're expecting a second, you know, new compensation package that's going to look out maybe 10 years from now to 10 years. So while I don't think he slowed down the robots at this point, it, it, I do think that this allows him to accelerate mm -hmm. and to really focus and have higher targets, milestones even sooner for the bots and AI. What would you like the next comp package to look like? Firstly, I don't think that comp package should be um, authored until the move to Texas is affirmed. Because once we move to Texas, we could have a you know, differential share uh, class and he can be comped in those differential shares. And so I would like to see a comp package that gives him the 25% control and takes us to you know $2,000 a share mark. It won't be expressed in price per share. I think it'll be expressed in, in revenue. Revenue for the bot, revenue for the cars, revenue for energy, revenue for the trucks. You know, I I don't know what other products are in the in the hopper, and so the revenue may not be tied to actual product, but to but to revenue. Uh, I mean, the revenue targets will be tied to you know corporate revenue rather than individual uh, divisions. And I expect to see you know, corporate revenues that would, and margins that would support a $2,000 a share price, or at least 10 to one, 1.5, 1. 1. 1.7 uh, trillion dollars uh, capital value. That's gonna be fun. We can start thinking about this. <laughs> we can start, you know, strategizing about it, expecting it to happen. But like you said, it probably won't happen right away. Okay, so let's just review a little bit, just for fun. Mm -hmm. You know, what happened in the last month, two months, the last year? What's going on at Tesla? Are they going to make a movie out of this? How are they going to look back at this historically? <laughs> Who, which actress would you recommend to play Alexandra Mertz? You know, I mean, this whole concept of the retail uprising. Was it big enough that people are going to take notice of this? This this whole, of course, the whole drama against Elon and what is and how the the company and the shareholders responded. <laughs> what do you think about that? Just for fun. Well, you know, I'm I'm not a movie guy. I I don't watch movies. Well, I don't, I watch movies, but the movies I watch, I don't think you know, are popular. I wouldn't even know the name of a very famous, <laughs> popular you know, star that would be, you know, 
that would be a good Alexandra. I mean, Alexandra should be herself, you know. She's just... I, to make a movie out of this is kind of making a movie too early. I mean, the Elon Musk story is going to be multiple movies, but I think we have to wait for a whole story because it's amazing what he has accomplished to date. And I guess you could encapsulate, you know, the story of SpaceX. You could encapsulate the the, the, the final, you know, triumph of the Model Three. You could you could take you could take moments and do something. But the story of Elon Musk, you know, it is an amazing amazing life story and it's not done yet and you know he's got a lot of detractors and so they'll you know given hollywood they could you know they could really turn that into a very nasty situation yeah, so that's right <laughs> i prefer to keep out of you know popular media at this point good point very good point Thank you so much, Larry. That was great. Appreciate your thinking about what's happened and what's going to happen in the future. That was great. Follow Larry on X at uh, Tesla Larry. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. I've created a website that is the most comprehensive resource for the Tesla investor. Please check it out. Simply go to my website at herbertong.com.